Good morning, tuber heads, or afternoon, whatever time you might be viewing this. Uh, today's victim for uh, repair is an old 60 horsepower Johnson VRO. According to the serial numbers, it's about a 1988 model. And today we're going to be dropping the lower unit, changing out the water pump. First thing you might want to do is establish your direction of rotation for the engine. You can do this with the starter. Just crank it over once and watch which way it turns. And put a mark on top of the flywheel as to the direction that it turns so that you won't forget. You can always go back and reference the mark that you put on your flywheel. Then you're going to want to pull a couple of pins. First pin you pull is this pin right here. It is your linkage to the direction forward and reverse and neutral. Pull that pin out and then it will free up your arm to move it manually and uh, start from there. Working by yourself you've got to be both camera operator and mechanic so it's a little difficult to do. But I think I can manage. It's not not rocket science. It's boat mechanics. Although the boat mechanics usually get paid more. There's your pin. Now I can slide this in that direction. However, let's put it in forward, all the way into forward gear, and uh, that way. Uh, it's easier to work on on the other side. Let's go around the other side of that motor and see why we need to get it out of there. Here you see the shift linkage. Now I'll put a little light on the situation. You might be able to see it a little more clearly. So we need to get to this shift shaft by sliding it this whole mechanism for that pin right there. The, the pin that's in that hole uh, comes in at a 90 degree angle to the vertical. So when you want to go ahead and uh, pull that out by grabbing the shift shaft on the other end where we just pulled that clip out and then uh, trying to work it in the other direction. Let's see if we can do that now. From the other side towards the other direction. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to pull it to, towards me. Well, there you go. Now your shifter shaft is off. You can see the the pin that uh, has to come out of the hole on that shaft. It's it's going. to do the lighting, camera, and mechanics at the same time. At this time it's easier to work on the engine if you have it a little elevated to where you can get to it without breaking your bag, stooping down. We're going to lift it up a little bit. Make it easier to work on, that's all. All right, now I'm all the way up. We've got to get some bolts off of this beast. It's been used in fresh water all of its life, so it's easy to do. Got to get these foot bolts off here, here, and there are some bolts that are hidden. One, in, you've got to get this this bolt off right here, and there are bolts here and here and underneath this plate there is another bolt that you've got to remove and once you've got all those things removed this baby will just fall out because you've already disconnected the shift shaft okay so I've got all the bolts dropped out of the unit 
got that plate off of the bottom it's just a little it's just a little guide plate that uh, drops out the bottom and then you have another bolt in there that you have to take out you gotta take uh, the front the front bolt off the back bolt holds the cathode for the cathodic protection so you don't really need to take that one out it's it's recessed a little deeper in there and it stores the aft but that forward bolt has to come off of there so once you have it dropped this far I had left one bolt in there because once you drop all those bolts this baby's coming out so I had left one bolt in there to to hold it in there and I'm gonna remove that bolt and she's gonna drop out of my lap if you don't have help you gotta do it you gotta set your camera down while you do it so I'm gonna go ahead and take that last bolt out of there gotta hold on to it while you're removing that last bolt or it's gonna land on the pavement or on your feet He's out of there. And now you can see, you can see why we had to do the, had to pull the pin on the shift shaft because the shift shaft was holding it in. So there's everything. Here's your water pump sitting on top of the lower unit and that's why I pulled the lower unit so that I could change that water pump out now I'll put the, the entire lower unit on my handy dandy lower unit stand otherwise known as a garbage can although this this motor is by far from being trashed it has pretty low hours on it. Here's the a close up of the shift shaft that you had to take the pin out of. So now I've got a disassemble water pump. Only takes four bolts to get the water pump housing off. These two right here and these two right here. Okay, I've got my bolts out of my out of my water pump but the four four you get the uh, water pump slide it up you got to go up that shaft and look right there there is an o-ring it's on the top of that shaft that must first be removed that rubber o-ring has to come off or your water pump slide off of this shaft Okay, so now I got the rubber ring, rubber O ring loose. Got to slide it up off the shaft. And, and there she blows. Set it to the side. You're going to get a new one in your kit. But you want to differentiate because there are other O rings. You want to make sure you get the right size O ring on the right location. This water pump should now slide up. You've got to be careful. Sometimes your impeller comes up with it. Sometimes it does not. That's your housing. There's your impeller. And you've got to be careful with this impeller. What it has is a very small plastic key that keeps it from spinning. And you don't want to lose that key to the, to the environment. This should slide right off of there, and indeed it does. And there is your key. It's a wedge-shaped key, and it's made out of plastic, believe it or not. So you've got to put that aside, and there's your other O-ring at the bottom. Got to pull it up, pull it off.
and as you can see it is a different size than the first one so you gotta differentiate those make sure you got the right one in the right place man I sure wish I had me a fresh hot cup of coffee to continue this video oh coffee oh who'd have thunk it anyway all I gotta do is wish for it wow I wish we have never heard the name Obama oh my god all right let's get back to this you got to pull this plate off and there's a gasket underneath this plate okay I've got my plate off now the reason I'm replacing this water pump the water pump impeller is not broken however it's rather old and for the sake of reliability not wanting to get broken down in the middle of a lake I'm replacing it with a new one so got to be careful how it goes back on because there is an upside down to this if you look inside of the housing let's get it in the light you can see it better you can see there is a chamfer in that housing but the chamfer goes one direction for that wedge shaped key so if you get it upside down it's not going to go on right you gotta get it right side up and you can tell by this old one the direction of rotation of the motor is in that direction remember I told you on at the beginning of the video to mark the top of your flywheel so it goes in this direction and you've got to put the new one into the housing with the arms bent in that direction so that they don't break off when you crank it up now my water pump on this engine it has a gasket that goes around the perimeter of the pump it is so flat and so old that you can hardly make it out on here even in person much less on camera but it does have a little it's like a giant formed o-ring and it's completely flat and probably brittle obviously not a very good seal now my new kit new water pump kit came with a gasket for the bottom plate clean off the bottom plate and this gasket does have an upside down and a right side up so you've got to be careful when you're putting it on there which direction you put it now I always seal all my gaskets with an RTV sealant I use a, a high temperature red RTV sealant on everything I have a gasket for not an o-ring o-rings require lubrication but a gasket requires a sealant don't use clear uh, silicone because clear silicone does not have uh, UV inhibitors uh, and a, it breaks down it more easily over time so use something with color in it like uh, blue or red or black I like to use the red high temperature sealant I've gotten a red RTV on it and you gotta be careful with the with the bottom plate of your water pump I did get a new plate with my water pump kit you put it on in the wrong direction the holes won't line up so you gotta get it get the right position on there and set it down your RTV should not be thick enough on your gasket to exude RTV into your openings or you will stop up places that should not be stopped up now your your new impeller which you must put on has an upside down and a right side up if you look at your impeller one side of it has a chamfer here around the perimeter of the inside and the other does not that chamfer is to accommodate the o-ring that goes on the bottom of their your uh, housing that you must put on I always lubricate everything with grease before I put it on so I'm going to lubricate that I'm going to put my my key in 
just dab it in with a little grease and it'll stay there till you slide your pump on and then you put your pump impeller on okay I've got my impeller back on you want to check and make sure that it the the uh, key is caught correctly it will have a little bit of slack in it but it will eventually turn that shaft as you turn the pump so you know that the key is locked in I lubricate all of the internal parts of the water pump with a little bit of grease as you can see here doesn't take much just a thin film of grease I use the red RTV to keep my gasket in place as I'm putting the water pump together slide it on the shaft now here is where it's key for the direction of your water pump as you put this together you have to make sure that your your arms of your uh, new pump are in the right direction you have to turn this shaft in the direction that your motor turns while you're putting this housing down so that uh, it uh, the arms will be in the correct position after you get it down grab grab the top with a rag and turn it with your hand and at the same time try to push your thumb against one of those arms that's going to be really pressed to get it on there but you can work it in and keep rotating with one hand and pushing down with the other and 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 uh, you'll get it in it's it's almost like dating so I'm gonna do that I can't do it while I'm holding the camera after you get your housing down hold it down with one hand while you rotate the shaft with the other hand and see what it feels like make sure it rotates freely and it doesn't catch on anything you don't want it to catch at this point uh, you'll be taking it back down again final assembly is done on the water pump you have another seal that fits on top okay so this is about where my camera crapped out ran out of memory so I went ahead and finished my repairs and figured I'd try to show you the rest of the video using the old parts this is the water pump the old one it comes with a new seal just slide it over the shaft it sets down pretty easily on top of the water pump you press it down and uh, I would put a little bit of a little bit of uh, all-purpose grease on top of the gasket before you slide it back into the lower unit and another thing you've got to watch for when going back into the lower unit is where the water tube that's inside of the uh, the lower unit housing the upper part of the lower unit has a water tube that fits right inside of here and sometimes when uh, mechanics have been uh, putting these together the tube doesn't quite mate and the edge of the tube will will catch the uh, the, the, this piece of plastic right here and uh, and cut it and you don't want any cuts or, or injuries to this upright you want to make sure when you're going up with this into the lower unit that that water tube goes right inside the middle of this upright you don't want to miss it and on this on this uh, seal right here it is okay to have some clearance in here that clearance is uh, is not an error. It's not the wrong seal. You do have you do have some clearance in there for that shaft. Uh, the uh, uh, shaft does not fill that seal, so don't worry about that. It'll uh, seal against the uh, lower portion of your upright going into the the lower unit. When you're going back up with the uh, lower unit, 
go ahead and slide it on in. Be sure you lubricate both the um, the drive shaft and the shift shaft, and then hold it in with just this this bolt on each side. This bolt right there on each side. That middle bolt on each side. You you go ahead and and uh, close it up with that, and uh, and then you hook up your shift linkage and you test to see if your shift linkage is correct because it's it's pretty critical uh, how that shift linkage works and at this point if you have to screw it in or screw it out uh, you only have to undo those two bolts one on each side drop it down enough to to turn your linkage and then turn your linkage in or out so T test your linkage right there before you you bolt it all up because you'll end up having to undo it all and uh, instead of uh, just those two bolts when you uh, going back up with your shift linkage got to be careful with this bushing this bushing has a small chamfer on it and you've got to get it right into the spot there is a little a little uh, a little tit right there and there's a chamfer on on the block that it fits into so you've got to be careful when you're putting it in that it meets that that spot on the block because if it does not meet that spot your bushing that white part will not go in all the way and it has to seat all the way because it's got a spring washer behind this washer and that has to fit for your uh, hair clip to go into that shaft. So you got to be careful of that when you're trying to get that back in, because it'll it'll uh, really give you problems if you don't. Okay, before you uh, tighten any of the bolts that that uh, that connect the lower unit on to the engine. Go ahead and, and install all the bolts and kind of get them a little bit hand tight, but not real tight. Get them to where this almost almost mates right here at this uh, mating surface. And then turn the flywheel with your hand to make sure that uh, everything is free to turn. Be sure and turn it in the right direction. Uh, and then after you get it... Uh, snugged up go ahead and torque all of them down uh, equally uh, get both of these torqued down one on each side then get both of these torqued down one on each side and then torque down the uh, the one that's uh, here and then torque the one that's under this plate and uh, torque them all equally you'll uh, probably need to put some kind of a uh, grease on them. I use a, you can buy small tubes of never seize at the auto parts store. Uh, I have a big can of it that I've been using for years. So put never seize on all your nuts and bolts then they go into the aluminum and they stay in the water so you want to be able to take them out in, in the future. So that's about all you have to it. Uh, let me know how it comes out for you and if this this video helped you in any anyway let me know put a, please put a comment on it I would appreciate that this is one of the very few videos I've ever made and so please uh, let me know how you feel about it thank you very much for watching I appreciate your time and attention good luck on your project